Hey, Coach, with Monte being updated to questionable, Aaron Gordon being probable for tonight's game, can you just give us what you know about both those two guys and what it would mean to have them back in your lineup? Yeah, um, with Monte first, Katie, uh, obviously he was uh, playing at a high level uh, coming out of the All-Star break. If you go back to that date uh, and had that injury uh, in Memphis, uh, he comes back from that, and then he has a hamstring strain when he played at Houston. Uh, so it's been a rough go for him, but uh, he'll be able to play tonight. I'm pretty sure uh, waiting for the final word to uh, confirm that. Um, really monitor his minutes, though. You know, uh, we'd be smart about how we approach these last four games uh, with Monte, with the, the, the real important goal of having him right for the playoffs. Um, and it just gives you another floor leader. You know, I mean, uh, we've all seen what Fogg can do. And we know from the last couple of years what Monte Morris is capable of. He makes his teammates better. He runs his team. He makes open threes. Uh, he guards. So just having him back, uh, if he's able to go tonight, would be tremendous. As far as Aaron, you know, once again, Aaron wanted to play last game, uh, but uh, it was my decision you know, to hold him out to be really safe. Uh, we can't afford to have any more bodies uh, go down. Uh, but from Everything I'm hearing, I think he's also on track to play tonight, as long as the pregame warm-up goes well. And um, you know, it would just be great to have healthy bodies. You know, we've been decimated by injuries, and as many healthy bodies as we can have uh, will help the cause. Chris Marlowe. Hi, Coach. Um, last few games, last week or so, it seems like Nicola has, has kind of gotten into it with the refs a, a number of times. What is your level of concern about his interaction and, and how it affects him and the team? Uh, you know, not concerned. Uh, I think overall, um, Nicola's done a really good job this year of, um, of handling the referees and trying to control his emotions. Sometimes, obviously, it gets to a point where kind of lose it a little bit, but um, I think a lot of what Nicole's dealing with right now is due to some of the fatigue, uh, both mentally and physically, from what he's been asked to do this year uh, on the season, and especially since Jamal Murray's gone down to injury. Um, but, you know, he's, Nicole understands, especially when we get to the playoffs, that uh, he can't allow the referees to take him out of his game. He can't allow that frustration to take away from him being a leader of his team. Uh, his teammates all look up to him, and especially right now with the amount of bodies that are out, it's going to be that much more important. So um, uh, I trust Nicole. Brandon Crystal. Yeah, Coach, with the uh, injuries obviously being an issue, and then you talk about Nicola's fatigue, you've mentioned that a few times. What kind of conversations do you have after the two tough losses, especially with the way Saturday's game unfolded, to kind of, you know, I, I guess I'm just curious, what are, the, are those conversations, especially with these – four games here on the road to close it out. Yeah, it's, um, you know, both Utah and Brooklyn are very talented teams. Utah's number one in the West for a reason. Uh, and even though Brooklyn had lost four in a row coming to our game, the teams they lost to were very good teams. Uh, and we know how talented they are. They are arguably two of the more talented players in the world, Kyrie and um, Kevin Durant. And then Blake Griffin in that third quarter, you know, had a tremendous quarter, shot the ball, very well, which gave them life. Um, all I could tell our team was how proud I was of them, but how hard we played, how we competed uh, when we're, we've been so undermanned. We have not allowed that to take away from our effort and our energy, which gave us a chance in both games. Um, but within that, there's also things that we could have done a lot better, especially defensively. Um, now, as we approach these last four, you know, you can sit here and say, oh, we, you know, What's online? You know, we're going to finish probably between fourth and fifth. We can't drop a low fifth. I guess there's an outside chance you could rise to number three. Uh, I think the most important thing is just trying to get to the postseason healthy. Uh, it's been a really long year mentally and physically for our guys. Um, and we've seen the long list of injuries, you know, the Jamals, the Wills, the Montes, uh, and throughout the season, all the other guys that have been in and out of the lineup. So can we use these last four games to – you know, find a rhythm, give some guys an opportunity to play, try some things out, and then get ready for whoever our first round uh, matchup is going to be. Sam Purley. 
Hey coach, uh, curious your initial impressions of when you guys saw LaMelo Ball for the first time out in Denver, I think a couple months ago, and what, if anything, specifically stood out about how he's played this year, uh, especially given that he is just a uh, just in his rookie season? Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously, we, we were able to uh, beat them at our place, and uh, it was a close game early, and then we were able to pull away. Uh, I thought that probably was one of his better games of the year. I'm sure you probably agree with that. Um, but when you watch the film of him in preparation for our game, and when you watch highlights throughout the season, uh, he has a tremendous feel for the game. And what I love and I'm a fan of is just uh, his passing, his passing ability, his creativity, his flair, and his ability to make all his teammates better. Uh, and obviously he has a very, very bright future ahead of himself. Um, he's playing for a great head coach in James Borrego, who I think is handling him. Uh, extraordinarily well with all the expectations coming in. And obviously, you know, I, I think the rookie of the year race will be really interesting. You know I mean? You have LaMelo Ball, you have uh, Halliburton out of Sacramento, you have Anthony Edwards in Minnesota, uh, all three talented players. But yeah, you know, uh, this kid is a special young talent and uh, you don't see that kind of passing ability uh, from young players like this very often. All right, Coach, we got time for one more. We're going to end with Ryan Blackburn. Coach, I wanted to pull on that thread a little bit. You mentioned LaMelo's elite passing ability, and you've obviously had the, the pleasure to, to coach Nikola Jokic over the course of these last six years and another elite passing prospect. How important is it, or was it for you to cultivate that talent from a young age with him? And what advice would you give somebody like James Borrego, who is trying to do the same thing in Charlotte? Yeah, I mean, um, Nicola early on, I remember his rookie year, we were doing some drills in practice and ball handling drills. And Nicola, as a young center, had a better handle than some of our guards. And that's when he told me, Coach, I used to be a fat point guard. <laughs> and uh, so he grew up handling the ball. He grew up you know, with the ball in his hands. And just continued to grow. Um, and then once we realized, you know, for me, at least in the, early in that second season, like, you know what, this guy had a special ring all over him. Uh, we have to make him the focal point of our offense. And by playing through him, that was going to allow him to make all his teammates better because that's what he does better than anybody else, in my opinion, in the league. Um, and that's why you use him as a centerpiece of your offense. Because yes, he can score, but he can also make the right reads. He reads the defense, he reads his teammates, and he lifts them all up with him. And uh, as far as James Borrego and LaMelo here, uh, constant communication, spending time off the court, on the court, getting to know each other, and putting him in position to have success. And although different positions, you know, I was with LeBron for five years in Cleveland, Ball's a point guard, LeBron's a small forward, Nicole's a center. I don't care what position you are, but all three have the ability to make your teammates better and run the offense. And now you have to get pieces that fit around those guys to make them better and to utilize them to the best of, of your abilities. Thank you, Coach. Hey, yeah, uh, this this really quick. I, I wanted to start off with this before we got going, but uh, obviously the news came out about Tony Brown, 19-year uh, NBA uh, veteran official. Uh, when I heard the news, you know, I was shocked. Uh, and just on behalf of myself, uh, our team, the organization, our thoughts and prayers with Tony and his family uh, as he fights uh, this pancreatic cancer diagnosis that he just received. Uh, so we're definitely thinking about you, Tony. On a second note, it seems like I've done this way too often this year. Uh, down in Colorado Springs over the weekend, Mother's Day weekend, another horrific shooting, mass shooting, six people killed uh, at a birthday party. Uh, and I just want all the people down uh, in the Canterbury Mobile Home Park to know that we're all thinking about them as well. So I appreciate it. Thank you.